Hey there everyone, this is Life Rick. Welcome back to my playthrough of Veteran Odyssey 2. Today we are going to get started on the 11th floor, finally, I know, right? So, this might be a long episode, but maybe not. Let's go ahead and get everything sorted out. Let's make sure that this has actually been done, which it has, which is good. Let's go over to the Explorers Guild, get our usual team, which would be... Linda, Eric, Kendra... Anna and Jason. And let us start exploration of the 11th floor. We're going to be locked in there for a while. So let's make sure I have all my nectars and stuff. So hang on as I get ready and prepared. Alright, I must warn you, I have the tendency of going on into these floors and pretty much completing the entire floor in one go. Uh, it's just This is just a, pretty much a mid-game. Now that we've, we are pretty much out of the early game and now we're in mid-game. So, around this time, I actually start being- I'm usually able to start staying in the labyrinth for, like, much longer than ever before, so I pretty much end up accidentally staying in for pretty much the entire floor, try to get shortcuts or something like that, it's just... Time passes really quick, and I have to keep an eye on it, otherwise these things get a bit too long, so if, if need be, we'll divide into point .1s and point .2s. Uh, now that that disclaimer is out of the way, here is the shortcut. Make sure you know it's here, because that is the pretty much the goal of this episode. Uh, as well as just exploring this floor in general. Uh, having FOE control skills also makes this floor immensely easier, as it allows you to control the FOEs in the area. Well, self-explanatory, obvious statement is self-explanatory and obvious, but just just let you know, those kind of help a lot in these little in this little section of the game. In addition, I do think this is kind of the draw point of the game. This is probably the most uh, sleepy stratum, I would say. Most sleep-inducing. Uh, it doesn't keep you wide awake. It's all white, and it makes you kind of want to go to sleep. The song doesn't help. It, it's a good song, but it kind of makes you sleepy. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've done this, so it's just... It's just... Yeah, this is a very sleepy stratum. It's very quite possible that most people who play this game tend to end up not completing the game because of this stratum. Um, not really because of Cilia, but because of the uh, mid-boss between you and uh, Scylla, so it's just, you know. Beat the Snow Soul! First new enemy of three or four on this floor. Snow Soul is weak to fire. Duh. And it has about 200 health. That's really not a big deal. I just tend to wail on him normally. Uh, I actually think I'm just going to just use my normal attacks against him. Just because I'm lazy. I turn on the auto, but then I wouldn't be- Oh, right, that's right. They also summon more of themselves. Just in case you forget. Alright, so I guess we're gonna have to kill these things with relative speed, then. Uh, you attack this, you vibrate that, you tornado down here, you use evil eye, just in case, and you use fire shot. Probably... Yeah, fire shot over there. And that should do it. Alright, this is why I used Evil Eye in the first place, in case something like this happens. Sometimes attacks miss, and thus you need to make up for it. And everything's dead. Good. I don't think the Snow Soul has any conditional drops. At least from what I remember, the... There's usually- I know there's two enemies on this floor that have conditional drops, but I know he doesn't have one. The other drop's just rare. And we still don't have scavenge yet, so I think that kind of, you know, bums me out a little. How close am I to scavenge? Am I, like, starting on scavenge? Does scavenge already- no, we still need two more levels of TP up. So yeah, we're, we're slowly but surely getting to scavenge, and once we get scavenge, everything will become a lot easier for us. And by for us, I mean for me, because some people can- some people somehow get by without scavenge, and I'm like, how do you get by with sca without scavenge? They're like, well, it's not really necessary. It's just, well, to me, scavenge is probably one of the best skills. It's why I got Waste Not in Neo 3s, because I like getting a bunch of items. Uh, it gives you more to sell, and it lets you, uh, even though it kind of doesn't make you, it, it's kind of anti-long stays in the labyrinth type of thing, but it doesn't seem to bug me that much. Let's see if we meet any new stuff here. Meet the Moriana. Uh, yeah. Moriana is weak to... 
think he's weak to Volt, but he could be weak to totally something else. You get his item by killing him with Volt, so that's what matters. So we're gonna attack and swing a Volt shot his way and just completely ignore him otherwise. Supposing we don't kill him with normal attacks, I think we'll be fine. Quite possible for Linda to kill before Jason. Yeah, whatever. Linda killed before Jason can get the Volt shot off, that's fine. Uh, the conditional drop is Bug's Nest. This regular drop is something else. I kind of lost track. But normal drop is normal drop. It will appear when we beat him once every once in a while. <sighs> really can't wait for Scavenge. So let's go over here. It's also been a topic of the comments recently. It's like, yeah, I can't live without Scavenge. It's like, yeah, I don't think I could either. Uh, it's just... There's a common subject that I see in the comments. Like, I can't... Yeah, just Scavenge is... It's just the best thing. Uh, we're gonna go this way and get an item. I believe there's an item over here. And by believe, I mean no. Because there's a difference between the word believe and no. And I tend to use believe, the word believe, a bit too much. Uh, it's, 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 believe is a word that you use when you're not sure. And I think I need to stop using words that simplify that I'm not sure. Also, I just got this guy in my case. Like, whatever, man. I have hot shot for you. So, no, wrong. Oh, many shot works outside about. Oh, well, duh, petrification. But it doesn't heal petrification yet, so it's just... You know, kind of confusing. So, let's go over here. Grab this treasure chest. I'm also going to go ahead and walk behind this guy so I know where he is and which way he's facing. It's one of the tricks with the FOEs in here. Uh, this is one place where Focence is probably your bestest of best friends ever. If you have somebody with Focence, this, this place is a lot easier. And you're allowed to go shortcut through places a lot better knowing where the FOEs are pointed. Uh... What did I just do? Yeah, I just got a sword. Right. <sighs> what I could do is switch between the rapier and cutlass and use the rapier, uh, switch the cutlass after I use 10 TP because it doesn't harm you doing that and get a little bit of attack. It takes a little bit of maintenance to do something like that if you have TP giving items to remember to drop them for non-TP items. So I tend not to try not to do it so much, but... I'll try to do it and see if I can catch up. Beat these... The Sleepner. I call it the Sleepner. I have no idea how you actually pronounce this. It's S-L-E-I-P-N-I-R. So Sleepner is kind of what I imagine you pronounce it. You, If you bind its legs, you can get its conditional. It's the only monster in the game that you have to bind its legs to get its item, I believe. So it's just... Whenever I have a Dominate primed, I'll send it over there, but otherwise, just know that getting rid of the Slipnir is kind of a thing. Also, meet the Fishman. Kill him with ice to get his conditional. Uh, let's go ahead and send a... I don't think we need both of... Linda's normal attack and Tornado should be able to deal with that. So send a Viper over there, send Tornado down center, uh, send an Evil Eye out there, and send an Ice Shot on the one on left. I think the one on left died, so... That's fine. Alright, Sleipnir's dead. Ice shot. <sighs> These things do kind of resist ice, so they're a little bit of a pain to get the conditionals of. I think I'm just going to attack and suicide it. I'll get its conditional eventually, and I'm not in too desperate need of its conditional, really. Uh, don't really desperately need anything at this point, but it, it's there. And as I said, I'm going to... Okay, we got some stuff, good. And I think somebody leveled. That's also good. Let's go ahead and... Kendra, you leveled up. What are you working on? This is the best... Oh, yes, work right at five. Yes, finally, good. And good. I'm gonna start working on Hypercut or Two Hit. Uh, I'm still deciding which one of those two I want. Also, slow down. Gonna have to hot shot him again. Or use Racket. No, I want Eric's TP for things like... I want Eric's TP to be used for its Viper, because Viper is amazing. And because I use Viper frequently, I want to make sure I have TP for it. Especially since I've decided to, you know, stay here for a while. Come over here. Alright, here's another area with the FOEs. But there's a treasure chest between these FOEs, which is what makes them makes me so tempted to go out of my way to get to them. Uh, going ahead and marking the high walls as so. I'm pretty sure it's like that. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's only this. FOE markers are your friends, if you, um, and I'm pretty sure they don't all face the same direction, but a lot of them are have, like, similarities in the direction they face, so pay attention, 
and I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. Mariana Fishman set. All right, great fun. Ugh, how am I going to kill this thing with ice? I'm still bent on that. Uh, Viper over there, tornado down here, evil eye, and ice shot. Actually, I'm pretty sure I just killed the fishman with Linda. Yeah, I did. Hmm. Oh, we got the bug nest, so that's not the conditional, it's something else. Uh, okay, good. Because I don't remember killing it with Volt, so there you have it. Alright, we're gonna come back this way. Um, for right now, I really want to get the center treasure chest, so we're gonna go back and go get that, and then we're gonna come back over here and get all this map done. So let's go over here. Um, the cutoff point for this episode may be completely random. Just saying. So if I... I'm gonna make sure I don't cut off its sittings, but if I divide this into multiple parts, uh, you'll know. Okay, he sees me. Remember, f always have a horizontal preference before they go vertical. At least I think he sees me. Yeah, he sees me. So we need to... Think if I, I want... What I want to do... Is I want to... I want to racket him to my location. So let's go ahead and send a racket. This is just so I can get behind him and get his location. I want to walk here. That's exactly what I wanted to do that for. Otherwise, I could really care less about him. Uh, once we know the direction in which these things face, it's just so much easier. So let's go here, grab this. this is a a coder die, this is for um, alchemist and the such. Flame leaf is still kind of useful because of the of the ice resist. So I tend to give this to my back row people. Namely I think Jason. No Jason can use coder die, yes. We also have a haste pen. Does anyone want that? Well, Jason could use the haste pen. And not the steel pen. Um yeah, I think 10 agility on him would help immensely, so let's do that. Let's go up here. I think the FOE over there lost interest in us, which is good. Now let's go over here. I'm also going to racket this guy to my current location, just so I can get around him. Uh, this is a little bit of waste on Eric's TP, so... Whatever. So, I just want to make sure I can walk on the spaces that they're on, so that their location is revealed. That is the big beef I have with this place. I want everything to be revealed. I want to know where these FOEs are looking. And the only way to know where they're looking is if you walk on where they walk on. Double snow soul, uh, double snow soul set. Nice. Now that now Jason's moving faster than Linda, so that's reassuring. Uh, I could also be using Snipe for speed, but I want to be able to use Ice Shot relatively quickly too. So this does this. This I know this little pile of snow is weird. Uh, I think it ends over there. Let's... Let's walk around. I'm not gonna walk on that space because it's not completely necessary. Walk over here. We need to exit through a door if we'd want to get these FOEs off our case for real. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go and cover the northern area. Let's go cover that. Uh, this is another annoying spot to map, so I'm gonna creep up next to this guy, but not because I want to see him, but because I want to get this little area mapped off. So I think it's like that. Places walls is very confusing and mixed up, so we're just gonna keep track of what we're doing. And as I said, we're trying to do this in mo as much of a one go as possible. So that is okay. This is the way towards the FOE, and that's the back way. There's a place here that requires either a, sur a survivalist and a war magus uh, secret entrances, and we'll cover those at a later time and day because I don't really need them immediately. Uh, I think the war magus one I'm interested in, but. Let's get behind this FOE first, before I do something stupid. Because I want to see which way he's looking, and it makes it easier to map the area on the other side if I know which way he's looking. Okay, double fishman, soul, no soul set. Not quite like this, uh, split deer, split near set, so let's... This time we're going to try to get an ice attack on one of the fishmen. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do Viper... 
Grenado, Evil Eye, Eye Shot. That should do it. Okay, not quite. Um, Linda attack this, you would- we'll, we'll just let that thing suicide itself to death and try eye shot again. That just sounds like the more logical conclusion. I'm just surprised that that didn't kill the fish. They do have a resistance to ice, so you, that kind of, you know, nullifies the fact that you have to kill them with ice, but it's just, well, whatever kind of thing. And that gives you the blue fin or the dew scale, I'm pretty sure it's the dew scale, but... Or the blue fin, whichever one of those two is, one of the- one of those are its conditionals. One of those is its conditional. <sighs> Man, I know how to speak, I do. Some- some days I do, sometimes I don't. This happens a lot in every- every LP I've done. I've- I've mixed up words, and I'm especially prominent of- Well, I'm pr prominent- prone to mixing up left and right. I'm sh as I'm sure many of you have noticed in episodes prior, I seem to mess up- uh, mix up left and right a lot, and I don't know why I mix up left and right a lot. It just- it just- for me, it just seems like something that just kind of happens. Is there an item point in here? No. Just color this in. Alright, came over here to get a treasure chest and to unveil this uh, guy's location. So I want him to get aggro. Okay. Wish granted. Wait, weren't you aggro like 10 seconds ago? Why are you moving over there? Uh, these FOEs, they act a little strange sometimes. Maybe he doesn't know I'm here. Well, you just keep knowing I'm not here, so... Let's go ahead and grab this. This is a 3,000 N chest. Grab it for the money, and if you don't need the money, you can ignore it completely. But I'd still recommend to come over here so you, if you don't have Focents. If you have Focents, you're allowed to ignore pretty much everything I say. But if you don't have Photosense, I recommend coming over here just so you can unveil this guy's location. It's very convenient to know where these guys are at all times. Look, how do I get you over here? Can I just racket you over here? Uh, I think I'll just use one of my Amritas. We're coming up to the Amrita gather point soon, so I'm not going to be afraid of using Amritas. So, okay. Got his attention. Let's go ahead and get behind him. I'm going to walk on his spawn point at the very least. Linda might die, but she didn't. Good. Uh, how did I solve this before? Viper over here, Tornado down center, uh, Evil Eye, and Snipe? Well, yeah, let's do Snipe just to make this quick. Fishman, Tornado. I should have used Snipe on the Splint near. Just realized that. Actually didn't matter too much. Once again, I usually just use Evil Eye as a reassurance thing, not so much as for any other reason. I also accidentally put the FOE in a place that blocks my exit. I didn't think this through. Okay, so the do scale is the fishman's conditional. That's good to know. Let's walk here. Now, if I use racket here, he's gonna... Go horizontal first, and then I'm just kind of screwed. Let's go over here and use Racket. Uh, so he goes straight down. And let's also, while we're here, using Amrita on Eric. We want to we want to continue fighting here. Prolong our stay, as I like to say. Especially since I want to be here for quite a while. So we're probably going to use an Amrita on Gandra as well, if need be. I'm not, I'm not afraid to uh, throw out these Amritas like they're candy, because really we are about to reach the point of which we can just grab Amritas. The moment we can reach a take point, uh, we have access to Amritas, so it's like... It's either a take or a mine point. I forget in this game. I'm pretty sure it's a take point. Okay, now we're going to sneak up behind this FOE over here. And I'm going to see if I can't get him aggroed on me and then hot shot him this time. Uh, once again, to save stuff. Also, fight we've already seen. Alright, Linda level, let's get her a level- whoop, pressing the wrong buttons. Uh, let's get her her 6th level in Kadoshis. And anyone else? Nope, not just yet. Alright, we're sneaking up behind this FOE. Let's see if we can do this. I might cut off for, uh, point 0.1, point 0.2 splits soon. I think unveiling this FOE's location is a good stopping point for at least, a 30.1. So let's go ahead and- I want to aggro him. And they'll always move horizontal first. 
As I told you, uh, FOAs have a horizontal preference. Also, uh, it does this. All FOAs have a horizontal preference and then vertical. Uh, this is very useful information to know and something you should memorize because it's in every Eternasi game, all FOEs prefer horizontal movement to vertical, unless they change that in Etern Odyssey 4, in which case you can just throw what I just said out the window and just say Etern Odysseys 1 to 3 make, sh make the FOEs have horizontal preferences than vertical. Anyways, the thing is, I want to get this guy's attention. So, I'm going to move back and forth until he notices me. Alright, he notices me. So let's slam a, ha a hot shot over his way. And let's move over his spot. Now that we know which way he's going to be looking, uh, we can completely and we can walk around the circle free. Uh, the map does... I'm pretty sure it does this. So now we are able to cut through this area no matter what. I'm just going to paint it in. Uh, since the FOE isn't going to be walking there normally. Uh, let's just paint this in, and now, whenever we, we want to cut in through this way, we'll know which way the FOE is facing. Now, these secret passageways are around here. As I said, I'll cover them later, so I'm not going to mark them just yet either. Um, just note that the War Magus is on the left side, and the Survivalist is on the right. Um, I think I'm going to end off seven, uh, 30.1, episode 30.1 here. I'm going to see you guys, uh, tomorrow.